Offensive line. Uh, okay. All right. So Trent. Trent he makes it look good, easy. One he on makes one, it look easy. He makes it look easy. Trent had a good year. Yeah. Trent had a, Trent had an amazing year. Um, yeah. He still ranked as, if not the best offensive lineman or tackle in the league. But at some point, you know, old habits die hard, man. There are some things about Trent that um, are left to be desired. The tipping plays is one of them. If we're going to have an exit meeting, then we got to talk about it. Um, I'd like for Trent to come into camp in better shape. Uh, and I'm fat. All, right, all, due respect, I, all due respect. All due respect. All due respect. So bad, you're the goat. Like, you're the goat. Uh, but let's be. You're also pro. You're also. You 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 hold yourself to the highest standards. So let's talk. Yes. Like yeah. I want Trent to come into shape. I want him to come into camp in better shape. I. I mean, in the earlier games of the season, he was visibly out of shape. And now, you know, and I'm not even here to say that that's not even been his process. Why he's been number one, right? Like Trent could be watching this and being like, "Bro, I ate McDonald's the year you thought I was the greatest." Like you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get your life together. Yeah, but you're 35 now. But you're 35. Thank now. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Now yeah. we need to start focusing on the attrition, the longevity. Yeah. And Trent, do you get that high ankle sprain if you're in shape in Denver? Do you get that? Yeah. Right? Does that yeah. happen? You mm -hmm. know, and 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 for Trent, um, I, I felt like a little bit near the end of the year, you could tell that he was pushing as a leader. He really wanted to lead, but would his body take him there? Yeah. Um, and I saw a little bit of that in the playoffs where um, now they're not coming at Trent one-on-one. -on -one. They're just trying to get in his chest because they just know he's older. So yeah. now they're counting on later quarters, uh, to more, more of a physical game. And that's how Trent is getting um, scouted now. And, and that's the thing, you know, no matter how good you are, if you put on the helmet, you're getting scouted. Yep. No matter how yeah. great you think you are, yeah. somebody is watching. People aren't like, oh, that's Trent. We won't watch him this week. No. Yeah. They're watching. No, yeah. 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 Nobody says, oh, well, we'll just won't even watch Trent Williams. No. Yeah. Everybody's watching and saying, how do we how do we climb the mountain? How do we yep. get it? You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yep. he's got to know And that. so when we pointed out that he was tipping plays, you don't think these teams saw that and be like, is he? Well, let's look. Oh, he, he kind of is sometimes. Hey, Hassan, just keep in mind. Just keep in mind. Yeah. If you and see everyone in a run stance and he's in a pass stance, just keep it in mind. Yeah. It's on you, and Trent. And they we talked about it and your coach talked about it and you essentially said, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And Coach Forrester acknowledged it. He, yeah. he did. Uh, yeah. And and it, it is something that, I mean, and Coach Forrester and Trent have a very long history. They they yes, were they together do. in Washington. Yep. Um, so if there's anybody that can have that conversation outside of Kyle. Um, yeah. It would be Coach Forrester, Coach Forrester, and just talking to Trent about. I mean, and, and to his point, he he was asked about retirement, and he was very honest about it. Like it's a grind, you know. Yeah. Uh, my my knees still hurt from playing. You know, I, I can only imagine what he's going through when he's saying to himself, "All right, well, I got a bag in front of me, but at the same time, I have this entire career." And this reputation that I built for myself. And all it takes is one bad season of me not being 100% in the game mm -hmm. for that reputation to be tarnished. Right? So uh, when you get higher in a longer career that is as, as illustrious as Trent's, he really is in it for one thing, and that's to win a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So I think that for him, it would I would say, ask yourself one question, Trent. Do you are you ready to put in a championship effort next year? Yeah, yeah. No yeah. more, no less. Yeah. And if you're ready to that. do that, then we'll see you in August. And if not, then hey, that's it. It's over. He deserves it. Yeah, it's over. You, you get ready for Canton. Yeah. Aaron Banks. You've grown, buddy. You've grown, Aaron. Uh, and 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 he waited his turn too. Yeah. Uh, he waited his turn. Um, second round pick unheralded, but unheralded here. Yeah. Um, I really like how he just kept compounding good on yeah. good on good on good. He was stacking games. You know, where he was 
Like, let's look at this. We went from Aaron Banks missing blocks on pulls against yep. Denver to Aaron Banks throwing blows with Trent and Philly. That's what I'm talking about. He has grown. He has grown. He's a man now. He's a that's man. His, that's his position. He took that. That's Left guard. his position now. Yep. Um, yep. And what I would love to see out of Aaron Banks is ownership. Yep. Own it now. All right. Yep. It's not good enough that you start anymore. Right. Now you need to start making your making yourself known a bit. Yeah, be a pro bowler next year. Be a pro bowler next year. That's the goal. You need to make yourself yeah. known amongst your contemporaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I don't really have anything bad to say about Aaron Banks. There was one point in Aaron Banks' progression that when he went down, there was literally a hiccup. We were all wondering when we were gonna get that hole filled. That's so true. Aaron Banks is a, is a good, I wouldn't even say redemption story. I think it's a good patience story. Yes. And yeah. I am. The Talanoa Hafunga of the, of the offense. There you go. There yeah, you pretty go. Much. That's pretty perfect. Much. I like that. Yeah, I like that. So um, let's go to, I'm happy let's go, for Aaron. And I want him to. Let's go to Burford. The number one oh, thing, go ahead. If we say anything about Aaron, don't let your body go. You worked hard for that body. You put in a whole year. For that body, yeah, Aaron. It's true. Please do yeah. not come out of shit. Don't come to camp looking yeah. like you did in Notre Dame. Don't do that. Yep. So that's what I would have for Aaron Banks. Love that. Good call. Um, yeah. Let's skip over the center be- and come back to him. Let's go to Burford because he's going to be here next year. Um, I, I, He just needs to stay steadfast in what he's doing. Um, What I would love for, to see from um, Burford is a little bit more consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to see you on the field for all four quarters. Now, that's not by your own doing. I'm sure that he would love to be on the field yeah, yeah, yeah. for all four quarters. Um, but because he was being rotated in and out, I would like for I would like for uh, Spencer to get stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think yes. that. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's something that he is more than capable of doing because he's so athletic and he's right? so young. He's yeah. so young, and he's got a lot yeah. of growing to do. He's got really long arms, great yeah, feet. All of that yeah. tackling, all of that tackle position and moving up and down the line at UTSA really yeah. helped him well. Um, one of the things that I like about Spencer that I don't want to change is that to keep the same tenacity, he kind of came in as a pro a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah. how, he, how he does his work, how he goes about his business. Um, and I've watched him. He finishes blocks. The biggest thing that I would say is that he needs to work on his pad level um, and getting to the second level. Once he gets to the second level, he's very erect. Um, and I would work on making sure that he just gets stronger in his base. He needs a stronger core. He needs stronger legs. Um, yeah. But as far as um, the athleticism that he brings, I, I think that he's going to get nothing but better. I hope they don't change his position. I, I really hope they keep I agree that. with that. I agree with that. People say I'm moving yeah. the right tackle. Whoa, he just had a a, a good start to a career, yeah. solid start at right. Just keep him in one spot. He yeah. hasn't mastered right guard yet. He hasn't. He hasn't even. Play, he hasn't even, to your point. He hasn't showed that he can do it for four quarters yet. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. rotating him. So yeah, good start. Keep him there, and that's more for Kyle and Chris Forrester. Um, right. Okay, let's talk about the two guys who are free agents. Jay, starting with Jake Brendel, who, frankly, we were all freaking out about before the season started, and he was. He wasn't even a. Was he a Pro Bowl alternate? Or was he just? It was a Pro Bowl alternate. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, freaking Pro Bowl UCLA too. Anyway, how you like me now? How you like um, me now, Jake? Um, I think that Jake is. Uh, I think Jake has a huge heart. Um, he, I've never seen him. I've never seen him stock block. I've seen him always make things happen to move forward. Uh, yeah. he's he's a bit. Um, he's a jack of all trades. But a master at none. But being a but not being a master is better than being a master at one. Like he's he's a jack of all trades. Like he needs one of the things that I love about Jake Brindle is that um, the consistency of staying healthy. Um, he I don't think he was ever out this year, was he? I don't think he was. No. Um. I, yeah, it's nice. He's some. He's somebody who. You, you want to make – let's be honest. All right, I'm bullshitting. Let's be honest. We want to upgrade the position, okay? But we honestly, wanna, it won't necessarily be that easy. He's going to get a nice little contract. It's not going to be easy. 
They're, they, I don't know if you can do it with a rookie. I don't know if they can afford to, to spend. I mean, if you can't afford him, then you're not going to get an upgrade in free agency. I mean, it's got to be it's got to be Zakel or, or someone like there's a there's a real well, we're chance hoping, they they downgraded Nick the position. Yeah, we're hoping for Nick. Uh, I, yeah. I, I want Nick Zakel to take it over. I think. Yeah. I mean, Jake Brindle gets beat. Um, yeah. But I I don't want to tell a vet. I just feel like it's unrealistic for me to tell a vet who is a, a consistent utility guy to go out and do something better. Like, you know, he like just had this, um, the year of his career. He just yeah. had the year of his career. Yeah. yeah. He should be proud. Um, yeah. So, I mean, kudos to him for having a great year. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to sit here and try to, I don't want to pump him up to like, he's not Creed Humphrey, but he's not Jason Kelsey, but he's not. Yeah. He's not Jason Kelsey, Kelsey, but um, he's ours. <laughs> well, you know what I'm he, this year he was. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's finish off with the right tackle, Mike McGlinchey. Also, an impending free agent could come back. We, 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 let's see what the good. With the, let's start with the good from Mike McGlinchey, a well-meaning, hardworking guy. He's had. This is the yeah. most consistent year he's had. Um, if we want to talk about the good about Mike, this is as far as level of play, um, not really falling off the. the one of the things about Mike McGlinchey, if we could just all say it, is that. His bad plays compound upon each other, and they all—that's what they even say. Yep. Yep. Yes, I, that I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. I, I, his bad plays compound against each other, and yeah. they're just always miss at, at the most worst time. Right. When you can get a mistake, um, right. and I feel like Mike has had plays where he's been beaten, but yeah. he's responded. Right. He's responded. Right. right away. He's had some viral moments, but at the same time, not a lot of games where they were back to back. Yes, not yes. a lot of games. And honestly, before, if we really want to talk about it, there's there's been games where Mike has just had bad quarters, yeah. um, yes. bad hats. Um, yeah. And I don't think that – I can't remember a game where we walked away from feeling like Mike McGlinchey cost us that game. I mean, right. Eagles would stand, right? Um, and we used to have a lot of games like that where we would always point out games where – just critical moments where we just gotta have it, man. We can't yeah, fourth have quarter it. coming back, and all of a sudden he gets the sex. Like, dude, what? You we gotta you, have now? It. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Also, one thing that I also want to bring up about Mike is that I'm really pleased about what he did with his body this year. Um, if you remember, Mike was battling that leg, and if you how he started the season, he was not 100. percent He was walking very gingerly. He um, was bare, limping around, out of his breaks. Yeah. yeah, limping out of his breaks. And I remember listening to a lot of practice reports where people were talking about earlier in the year that Mike was just flat out not practicing. Um, yeah. He had like a pronounced limp. And you yeah. saw it in the preseason. And as the year went along, Mike got stronger. Um, yeah. It wasn't even noticeable about his leg. And if you, if you also remember, Mike tore his quad last year. Right. Um, right. You know, so, you know, this is the humanistic element of the, the consistency of it all. For you to come back off that injury, right, mm -hmm. come in, start, and actually improve upon what you did last year before you got hurt, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. That's a win. And, you know, let's be honest, for the market of where we are right now, you got to talk to right tackles nice nowadays. You know, you just can't. <laughs> yeah, hey, let's <laughs> – no wonder it. they're always pumping up Mike. You know what I'm saying? It's true. Yeah, yeah. It's you true. Know, that's hell. You know, dude, Lane Johnson's making left tackle money over in Philly. I mean, with I mean, with yeah. his false starting ass. I mean, they need to do. Something. Oh, every play, every play. Why? Why is that not called? Can someone explain that? What is that? When did the NFL decide they weren't going to call uh, false starts for certain right tackles? That was weird. Did you see when he did it on the red zone? In the yeah, red I zone. Yeah, when I didn't understand that. So hey, weird. I don't. I don't understand, man. That's I the kind of stuff that gives credence to conspiracy theories. You can't let that happen, NFL. What's going on? The block punt. The, yeah, the, 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 he got put. Yo, don't get me started on that. Okay, track. we're getting off topic. Let's give a grade yeah. to this group. Let's give a grade to this group. Um, offensive line C. It's funny. Same grade we gave the D line, and and it's like I, I really feel like the that's what the, the one of the main takeaways the the NFC champ the Niners should take from the NFC championship. They are not good enough in the trenches. They want to mm -hmm. be great in the trenches. Philly's great in the trenches. That's what well, a team that's great in the trenches looks like. That's what you need. To, that's what you're aspiring to. I will say this: the reason why the offensive line with the with our offensive line is kind of uh, how can I say by way of committee 
as yes. it's constructed yeah. is because of the us because of the the type of run scheme that we run and this is the problem is that we got a we got an inside and outside zone offensive line which means that we have very athletic lighter linemen who can run laterally along along to the sidelines to create gaps cut back lanes reach blocks right where you can where you can bounce crash or bend mm-hmm. and with that type of lineman, you got to really be steadfast to the type of running style we have. We, But we don't only just do inside and outside zone running. Nope. We do gap scheme. We do or we do body everything. on body. Yeah, do we, everything. You know what I'm saying? So if you really look at it, man, fuck that. I'm giving the offensive line a C+. If okay. you look at it, if you really look at it, they have to deal with so many different styles that a team like – Philly is that they just get to put their hand in the dirt and play. That's right? true. They, how many how many concepts do they do in Philly? Uh, zone read, inside zone, zone read, RPO. outside zone read. Yeah, I mean, very yeah. few, very yeah. few. Yes, very yes, few. Yes, I mean, yes, we yes. were even watching that game and we kept saying like, this offense Vanilla. is not imaginative. Like, I, no, I don't get it. No, basically they they were like, oh, uh, Brock Purdy's hurt. Okay, we're doing nothing today and we're gonna win. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I'd say like a C plus for the offensive line just because of. What we we are a running team. How the hell are we gonna be a running team and they don't at least get a C plus?